Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this Friday, the end of the first full week of June. Um, it's been a, a, a pretty decent week. We had a few down days, a few up days. Um, today, it looks like we get the jobs number and uh, the unemployment number for May. We'll talk about that and more when uh, when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. Hey, don't forget, there are so many things that we cannot control in this world However, you can take control of your investment portfolio by knowing the amount of risk you have in that portfolio, comparing it to the amount of risk you should have in that portfolio based on how close you are to retirement. Give me a call at 863-382-0037 to run through my core retirement analysis. And with that, we got Dave coming up next. Dave is here. I'm glad you're here, too. It's 841 now, 19 before 9. It's time to check in on money. No, I don't mean your checkbook balance, your investments. How's your IRA and 401k treating you? Well, we'll find out. Got Philip Statler on the line from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring. Hi, Philip. How are you this morning? Hey, good morning, Dave. Doing well as we close out this first uh, full week of June. Uh, it was kind of a mixed bag this week, uh, but yesterday closed up not too bad. Uh, this you morning. up taking yeah, we'll take it. I ended up with a, a close up on the Dow to 79 points. That was good. And then basically flat study on the S&P and the NASDAQ yesterday. We ended up down by one rock-crushing point in the uh, Standard & Poor's and 15 down against the 17,000-odd point NASDAQ isn't much after those two indexes both set new records the day before. Wouldn't surprise either of us much to see a little retrenchment, you? No, exactly. And, uh, you know, with some of the news we got coming out this morning, maybe more than just a little. I suspect so, which brings us up to the lead story. And this is the uh, this is the big one we've been saying was going to come all along. Got our hopes up when the ADP number in private sector jobs was actually much less than expected. So we get the official May jobs report out. And when we first got on the phone before we went on the air, I said, OK, my bull crud detector is going off because I got through elementary school arithmetic just fine. We added 272,000 new jobs to the economy last month. That's about half again as many as uh, the economists expected. They only expected 185,000. But the unemployment rate went up from 3.9% to 4%. And like I said, I got through elementary school arithmetic. You don't increase the potential, the the percentage of unemployed when you overachieve the number of jobs you create, do you? I, I would think not, but let's let's think through this just a little bit, Dave, to to give maybe the benefit of the doubt. So the jobs created doesn't mean that all the jobs out there are filled, or that. Um, you know, some jobs out there didn't get discontinued. Um, and, and so, and then you got people leaving the workforce. And so that, you, you know, you've got 10,000 people a day right now turning age 65 and those people could be retiring. And therefore that could, that could play with the unemployment number a little bit just to be yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And that plus one thing that we discovered a few months ago when the administration was bragging about all the jobs they've created, uh, there's a whole lot of part-time jobs in that mixture, too. So same people working two part-time jobs and whatnot. So you don't necessarily increase the number of people employed when you increase the number of jobs. And that's something that kind of makes your head want to explode, but it's a fact of life, right? Exactly. So, you know, yeah, and, 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 and none of us really know what makes up all these numbers. Um, that's the, you know, behind the dark curtain number. So it's uh, one of those things. Uh, yeah. And what well, basically we also know that during an election season, we needed a good jobs creation number, even though it's not going to impress the market much. Got to keep in the background here is the fact that the Federal Reserve's Open Market Committee meets on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And that doesn't exactly bode well for them having an optimistic outlook. When you and I were talking before we went on the air, they kind of got half a loaf, though. The Fed has been saying they want a 4% unemployment rate. They got it, but we kind of went in the back door to get it with that job creation number, didn't we? Well, it is. You're right. That's uh, you know, It didn't make sense when you start looking at all the numbers. <laughs> Not really. Other things, digging deep a little bit on the uh, report that we got yesterday, the uh, the uh, JOLTS report, 
Uh, we actually slowed down with our wage increases. That is a semi-good bit of news, at least for folks that are cheering for no saber rattling from the Fed about interest rates. Uh, the uh, year-over-year pay increase for folks switching jobs, these are people that are switching jobs, it went from uh, 8.3% in March, 8% in April, down to only 7.8% in May. It kind of indicates that the employment market, while it may not be cooling off much, it does seem to be stabilizing a little bit. You can't exactly go to your boss and say, oh, I got an offer to double my pay. Probably isn't happening. Uh, pro- probably not. I mean, those, uh, you know, some of that is uh, definitely uh, come off the table now. And so we're, we're seeing that part of the jobs um, situation kind of rel- relevate back to, to some normalcy. And that's a nice thought to get close to normalcy anyway down the line. Uh, the stock. I gather the futures markets were not impressed by that overachievement on jobs. You said they kind of turned negative. When we get to it, we'll get an idea just how negative they end up getting. A bunch of other tidbits that are floating around out there. Uh, that, uh, this is two interlocking elements down the line. The Justice Department is now going to start looking into artificial intelligence creators. NVIDIA, OpenAI, Microsoft, and the rest want to make sure they do things according to the government hoil. And that probably contributed, I'm going to guess, to the fact that NVIDIA fell behind Apple as the biggest company on the stock market. because Nobody particularly likes a press release that says the government's investigating what you do for a living, right? Well, that's right. Let's face it. That, <laughs> anytime the, you know, the federal government starts to investigate a company, that's going to put uh, a little gray over that company for a little while. Oh, yes. I'm from the government and I'm here to help you is not a phrase you really want to hear. Uh, tidbits out there as well. By the way, the Census Bureau reports that we created 600,000 new millionaires last year. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I'll bet they had stock in NVIDIA, right? Yeah, they probably did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other other element that's worthwhile mentioning is because it qualifies under the heading of tidbits. Uh, Saudi Arabia is going to start selling off some more shares of their state oil company, Aramco. Seems they got a bunch of uh, big capital projects they want to do, so... They're going to sell a couple of billion dollars worth of Aramco stock. You can buy the Saudis at $7.27 a share. Given how much they control, that doesn't really sound like a bad idea, like a bad investment to me. Uh, no, if you get to participate just the same as they do, then I would think they'd, they'd be looking out for themselves pretty well. Uh, yeah, I suspect, though, that they're looking out for themselves with at least a 60% share of all the stock, no matter how much they sell, wouldn't you? <laughs> exactly. At least. At the end of earnings season, we do have a couple of companies uh, that have reported their quarterly numbers, and one of them is one of those companies I've been scratching my head for years, how they can become a mega buck company, and that's DocuSign. How'd they do last quarter? So DocuSign released their um, second quarter and full year forward guidance. E- even though they had a good first quarter, they topped uh, the Wall Street estimates across the board. However, again, their guidance number not so good. Um, they did authorize a billion dollar stock buyback, uh, mm. but even with that, um, it's got DocuSign trading down seven and a third percent this morning. Ouch! I got to assume with the slowdown of the real estate market, that being one of the one of the primary things they do so well and they do so much of, uh, their guidance would probably at least level off a little, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, let's face it. They do a, a large part of their business comes through real estate transactions. And, and that, that part of the market is definitely slowing up. And, and there's not probably anything out there that's going to help make up for that uh, missing revenue. And, and so it's just, a, it's just a, you know, one of those cycles that we're in right now. I hear. Another one that you mentioned before we get on the air was uh, one of my favorite places to hang out when I was living out in Colorado. Not a skier, but I love it during the summer. How did Vail do this past year? So Vail, they uh, reported some disappointing quarter results. Uh, they fell short of both sales and income. They did post a profit of nine dollars and fifty-four cents a share on one point, almost one point three billion dollars in revenue. But but they still missed, and so that's got them uh, getting hammered this morning, down nine percent. 
that don't help a bit. Resetting no. the table. No, resetting the table. Mixed bag yesterday, but the uh, blue chips on the Dow kind of drove the market. We had a $79 increase yesterday. Everybody else basically flat for all intents and purposes. After we get kind of a pleasant surprise that's not very pleasant for what we're looking at next week, how are the futures doing after that employment report? Yeah, they got solid red this morning, Dave. The Dow's down about four tenths. The S and P five hundred is down a little over four tenths, and the Nasdaq one hundred is down a third of a percent. The Russell two thousand is getting clobbered this morning, down one point three percent. Yeah, but not as bad as silver, Dave. Silver's down four point seven percent this morning, back down below thirty at twenty nine dollars and ninety cents an ounce. A gold's not too far behind them, down 2.3 percent, um, down at 2,335 dollars an ounce. And crude oil is heading the other direction, up four tenths to 75 dollars and 86 cents a barrel. Dave, you need to start uh, ranting and ch- chanting again so we can get it down below 75. Well, I think so. Now, got it all. What are people doing? The commodities down, the indexes are down. What are they doing? Looking at stuffing money in old mattresses or something? Not sure, man, but uh, definitely oil going the wrong direction. I got you. They aren't investing in Asia, I can tell you this. The Asian rim closed almost universally down this morning. Uh, mainland Chinese markets even uh, mostly down for the two mainland Chinese markets, and everybody except Australia was in red ink by about, oh, call it about a half a percent or so. Europe is looking at our futures and saying, what row? Uh, the European futures are down almost uniformly this morning, not precipitously, but about four-tenths of a percent halfway through their day. Planning on retirement, it takes a takes an action plan that you can live with, that you can afford to keep up, and uh, that you can count on. How do I get a hold of you to get a plan so I can retire the way I planned on it? Dave, that's why I developed the core retirement design, to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. Give me a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis, and then join us this weekend. For the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk, 7.30 a.m. and 95.3 FM. And us next week, same time, every day, weekdays. I appreciate you joining me this week, Philip. I'll see you next week. All right, man. You have a great weekend. Thank you. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. First again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Hope your week went well and pray you have a great weekend. See you again next week. Bye now.